Now, everybody loves to hit in MLB The Show, but one of the more underrated things that you can do in order to win games is pitch effectively. And in this video, we are going to talk all about pitching and pitching tips. Let's get into it. What's going on, Show Nation? It's Movie with Movie Gaming TV, and in today's video, we are going to talk about pitching tips in MLB The Show 19. We're going to cover a lot of stuff in today's video. This video is going to be a little bit longer than my hitting tips video, most likely, because I want to cover a lot of stuff, because pitching, it doesn't get a lot of tips here on YouTube. There's not a lot of talk about it, so... I'd like to give you guys a deep dive. I got this requested in the comment section. Feel free to always interact with me in the comment section. I'll read pretty much all my comments that I can. So someone requested I do some pitching tips, and here we go. Uh, we're going to go with, uh, we're going to talk about cameras first. Then we're gonna, I'm going to give you a brief uh, tutorial on how to use analog pitching, which in my opinion is the best way to pitch uh, as far as like the input of the game. Uh, we're going to talk about strength of pitches, and uh, we can cover strength of pitches right now. You see the four-seam fastball, the slider, the changeup, the cutter, and the curveball. Those aren't in a random order. Uh, those are in the order of the strength of Max Scherzer's pitching ability. His best pitch is his four-seam fastball. His worst pitch is his curveball. This is important to know because usually past like three pitches, uh, a pitcher doesn't have, unless they're an amazing pitcher that has control all over all their pitches, um, you're going to want to use those top pitches more than the lower pitches. But Max is pretty dang good. All of his pitches are pretty dang good. Just something to keep in mind about strength of pitches. We're going to talk about mixing up pitches and how important that is. Um, it's always, it's really important in real life, but it's also important this year in MLB The Show 19. We're going to talk about where to place particular types of pitches. Where do, where do you want to spot fastballs? Where do you want to spot sliders? Where do you want to spot changeups, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. And then finally, we're going to talk about pitch combinations, different ways you can approach uh, hitters, um, you know, and pitches that set up each other so that uh, they can be more effective. So first, we're going to get into cameras. Um, now, there's a variety of ways that you can use the camera. Um, I'll just give you the ones that I use if you want to use those. But whatever you're most comfortable with is uh, the most effective. I really use two. I use Strike Zone, and I also use Pitcher Offset that you guys saw the video, how it started off with. Now, I like Strike Zone for a variety of reasons. Uh, I like Strike Zone because this is the view that I hit from. And so I like seeing the path of the ball all game from me hitting from that perspective and also pitching from that perspective. Uh, it just allows me to get like extra BP in a way, extra mental reps while I am hitting. So I do like that. I also like how precise I can spot the like pitch to the pixel pre-pitch. So if I want it like right here compared to right here, it's a lot easier to see in, from this view. It's like I can put it right in the corner. Maybe I want it a little bit more in because I've got three balls and I want to make sure I throw a strike. I, I really like that about this view. I also like that um, I can see the runner on second base. Is he taking a one-step lead? Is he not? Um, so it kind of gives me an idea if they're thinking about stealing uh, third base so I really really like this view quite a bit uh, this is a strike zone view now I kind of switch up based up based upon how I'm feeling that day some days I feel like using uh, this view uh, and then some days I feel like using uh, pitcher offset lately I've been using pitcher offset a lot more but it's just kind of like it's just kind of like reticle and wedge with hitting sometimes I use uh, wedge sometimes I use reticle it just kind of depends what I'm feeling that day. Whatever view you like to use, uh, I suggest you stay with it. Or if you're having trouble and you want to try out one of mine, go ahead and try those out. I, I also really like pitcher offset uh, quite a bit. But like I said, you can't see behind you the second baseman. But I can kind of see the batter swing a lot more. When I was growing up playing travel baseball, uh, I was a pitcher. Uh, that was definitely my biggest strength in baseball was pitching i loved pitching a lot so this view is you know it's a lot like what you see when you're on the mound and you're looking at a hitter in the box so that's kind of gets uh cameras out of the way now let's talk about uh analog basically here's the analog meter 
you can see the yellow line down there and then if I move this left and right it moves it on the plate and it's nice from this view too because it's like it's natural if I move it to the left it's going to the left side of the plate if I move it to the right it's going to the right side of the plate now a common misconception is we place this ball low and in is you would think the path would have to go straight down and then straight up to the side for you to be able to hit this pitch over here you don't have to go straight down and go over to the left you can actually go back to the right and then back up to the left or if it was over here you could go down and then over like that you don't have to go straight down so that that's actually a really good thing and helping you be more accurate so i'm going to pull down to the right and push up to the left i'm not making going down and going to that that'll help you get analog pitching a lot more quickly if you decide to uh try it out uh if i go below the line it's going to pitch the line it's going to pitch the ball lower and if I go above the yellow line, it's going to pitch the ball higher than my intended spot. So those are two things to remember there. Uh, another thing too is a fastball. Now that's going to move on that top meter. Okay, if I move to the left, it moves to the left. If I move to the right, it moves to the right. Let me step off there. Now a slider, if I move that into the left, it doesn't move as much on the plate. It, it's more like if I put it down here, I need to almost go straight up and down compared to a, a fastball low and inside where I'm going to almost go, you know, way outside with that. So keep in mind of that, you know, pay attention to where the hoop is up at the top when you're pitching. So that's just kind of a basic analog tutorial. If you guys have any more questions about that, leave that down in the comments below. We already covered strength of pitches. So let's talk about mixing up pitches. Now you pretty much get one uh, pitch that you can spam now, and that's the top strength pitch that four seam fastball they made it so you can't just throw a change up every single pitch without taking a penalty this year um, so you really want to mix up your pitches and you also want to mix up your pitches in real life too because you don't want someone sitting on your pitch knowing what pitch is going to come in and with mixing up your pitches it's not just the pitch themselves but it's also the location you want to change their eye level so you might want to have them looking high and inside and then you want to throw low and outside you don't want to just throw to the same spot in the strike zone over and over again. It's gonna help you get a lot of, it's gonna keep them on balance if you're throwing low and inside and then you're throwing high and inside. They gotta cover the entire plate with their PCR. They gotta think, oh, this ball could be anywhere. And if you can get the, the hitter off balance, uh, you're gonna be doing your job. A mental chess game between the pitcher and the hitter. The batter's always trying to stay on balance. The pitcher is trying to keep them off balance. So mixing up your pitches is very important. Now let's talk about where to place specific pitches. So let's we're gonna go through all these pitches and I'm gonna tell you where I like to throw them. Now fastball, I like to throw a fastball up and in. I like to throw fastballs also later in counts more in this game than early in counts. Maybe the first pitch I'll give them a fastball, but I'd rather use my off speed to get to like 0 and 2 and then use the fastball to blow it by them so they'll be late on the pitch when they're sitting off speed. But I like to place a fastball either like up and in, and I like to put, uh, spot pitches kind of like above middle in. Uh, instead of like right being right middle, I like to be just like a little bit up or just a little bit down. And the reason for that is it's tough to move their PC, it's tough to move your PCI like just squared up on that compared to like moving it to a corner or moving it to the middle or moving it to the top. Now you have to take more of this angle with your PCI. You know what I'm saying? You have to get it like <clears throat> not in one of those corners and not in the middle to square up the pitch. So I like to throw a high and inside fastball. One of my fat fastball. I also will, th if I feel like they're not going to swing or they're trying to take, like I've thrown a lot of sliders low and away, I might throw the fastball low and away. Just wherever I'm using off speed, I might, th the fastball is, the pitch that I'm going to trigger, you know, the actual pitch in the strike zone a lot of the time. And you're going to get them to freeze on that pitch. The other time I like to use the fastballs, if it's like the pitcher or something like that, or if it's somebody that I'm really not worried about them doing a lot of damage to the plate and I want to make sure I throw strikes. You don't really want to be throwing a bunch of balls. You don't want to fall into the trap of, oh, they're swinging. At, at everything and you know they never take a pitch uh that will work versus somebody that does that but somebody that anybody that has any plate di discipline you're going to want to get ahead in the count now that said 
you have to pay attention to um, you know you have to pay attention to what the hitter is doing. You're gonna run into more some hitters that are, ex- are extremely selective, so you need to be hitting your spots. You need to throw more pitches in the zone. Uh, you know, instead of trying to throw every single pitch on the black, you might want to throw a pitch right here and try to get in ahead in counts because you don't want to get in head, uh, uh, behind in counts and have them be really effective against you. And then also, if they are swinging everything outside the zone, there's no reason to, you know, you got to keep that in mind. You know what I'm saying? You can't just throw them. You don't want to be throwing them a bunch of pitches that they can hit really well. (laughs) You're not doing yourself uh, any favors there. You know, you can dance around the black a little bit more. You can throw pitches a little bit more outside and use their over aggressiveness against them but for the most part i'm telling you guys you want to throw pitches for strikes in the zone and that's because you want to keep your pitch confidence up and you can see uh, there's an energy meter and then there's a confidence meter once that confidence meter goes down i feel like it's uh, a big factor and like giving up consecutive hits if you've gotten two or th- if the your opponent's gotten two or three m- more hits on you your confidence is going to start to go down and what you can do is you can call for a mound visit. You hit the touchpad and you call for I can't do it in the practice mode, but you hit the touchpad and you call for a mound visit. That will give your pitcher some confidence back. It will help your pitches be more precise. And also the, that yellow bar, if you're more confident, it will increase. And if you're less confident, it will disappear. And you really don't want it disappearing because then you can't spot your pitch as well at all. So keep that in mind as well. Now let's talk about sliders. Uh, sliders to a right-handed hitter with a right-handed pitcher, and just conversely, if it was a left-handed pitcher with a left-handed hitter, you want to throw these things low and outside. No, Max's uh, head's a little bit in the way, but this is pretty much. Uh, well, let's uh, go to the other camera just to talk about that. Actually, I, it's going to make me throw a pitch real quick. But you want to throw it low and outside because um, you can uh, use that in combination really well with the fastball. I'm going to go to the camera to um st- we're gonna go to strike zone so i can have max's head be out of the way but uh here we go here uh slider ideal spot right here for a strike low and outside that's the ideal spot for a slider uh just it's a devastating pitch uh in that regard now we're gonna go with the slider here versus a lefty uh, you can either spot it right here. Sometimes I spot it right here, just like right below the black. And if I need to throw for a strike, I probably actually wouldn't throw this pitch to a left-handed pit- hitter for a strike because it could get caught in the middle of the plate and get driven. But a backslide slider low and inside is a really effective pitch to throw to a left-handed hitter. The other spot that you would want to spot this pitch is you would either want to spot it like right up here right inside middle and you don't sometimes if i have like andrew miller or something i might get crazy and throw one high and inside but for the most part you know middle in we're right here and that'll jam them or right here and the reason that pitch is so effect wait the computer's trying to steal on me the reason that pitch is so effective is because you're gonna also throw a fastball right here right so if you throw a fastball right here it's gonna be they have to respect it for a strike now you use that in combination with this slider here or a slider just inside. It looks like a fastball all the way. I didn't execute that pitch perfectly, but it's going to look like a fastball all the way. And then the last second, it's going to jam them. That pitch is really, really hard to hit with uh, any decent kind of pitch speed. So that kind of gets into our first pitch combination there. You know, a fastball inside. And then we're going to take a slider and just put it a little bit in if I could execute the pitch let me execute that now it's going to look like a fastball but the last second it's going to break makes it tough to hit Uh, another good pitch to use is a cutter Uh, and it's the same exact thing you don't want to leave cutters in the middle because it's basically going to be a slower um, a slower version of your fastball but the cutter will look like a fastball the whole way and then it cuts right on the inside. It jams them a lot. You can get that spot. That's how you break their bat and strike them out. Or just get them to hit it and play right at somebody. So use that combination. If it was a right-handed hitter, I kind of like to throw the cutter low and inside. Curveballs. I like to throw a curveball like low and in. 
uh, or I like to throw the curveball. You just want to leave curveballs low. You do not want to throw a curveball high. Uh, curveball high, it's going to get hit really hard. Curveball low, you want it to just clip the very bottom of the zone. You want their decision making process to be like, is this going to clip the bottom of the zone for the strike? Or is this going to be below the zone? I have to lay off it. And also when they chase and they hit it, they'll hit it on the ground a lot for a ground ball. So if you got a runner on first like we do here, hopefully he can hit the curveball on the ground for a double play. And uh, I, I don't like to spot it like at the ground like this because it'll just make it, it put puts a tough time on your catcher to block it. So unless you have like a really good defensive catcher, you don't want to do that. I'd rather spot it like a little bit below for a strikeout, just a little bit below. So if I execute it, and even you can see there, I, I, I didn't get it perfectly the way I wanted to. You don't want to bounce it around too much. Just go a little bit below the zone. So that's all I pretty much got for you guys. Uh, this is kind of a longer video. I was trying to cover as much as I could, but those are some basic uh, pitching tips. What kind of pitching combinations do you guys like to use? Let me know down in the comments below. I hope this video helps. I feel like I could talk about this for like two hours, so it's really difficult for me to like condense this down into one video, but I, I tried to do my best. And uh, again, check out the hitting tips videos if you would, uh, if you guys would like. Um, I can do more tutorials if you guys have any tutorials that you'd like me to cover. I would like to get into uh, uploading a lot more gameplay and doing educational commentary and just kind of like entertaining gameplay on the channel that's probably going to be what you guys are going to see more of uh leading forward now that i have like a lot of my base tutorials out because when i'm streaming i get like a you know a lot of questions about hitting or pitching and so i can uh put these videos in my stream at twitch.tv backslash movie game tv and i can like link them out so that's pretty much what this video is today thank you guys so much for the support i really really appreciate it um uh, it's been a lot of fun making these videos and i hope you guys have had a lot of fun playing MLB The Show so far. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, peace out.